Hello my soccer universe, what a wild two weeks it was, especially in Germany uh, and especially in Munich since the last time we talked. Um, first of all, the bomb that hit very, very quickly where uh, Julian Nagelsmann got fired by Bayern Munich just a few hours and while he was skiing in Austria and there's something with skiing if you're with Bayern you know uh, Manuel Neuer then his best friend got fired now Julian Nagelsmann went skiing in Austria and he got uh, the sack every, and it was it's still not quite clear the communication was rather rather bad I have to say from uh, Bayern it was yeah we were behind Nagelsmann uh, who we paid 25 million to Leipzig to have him to give him a long contract um, just as a side note, up until 11 that evening, we were fully behind him until we weren't. And then, you know, they already talked about Tuchel, uh, who is living close to Munich, and they didn't want to miss out on him again with all the jobs opening up everywhere. And in the end, they went for Tuchel, who was, of course, happy, although he admitted him himself that when they first contacted him, they thought, uh, he thought that it will be to start the new season. No, 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 this is immediate, this is immediate. Uh, which, you know, he was not immediately on board with, but you know, after some convincing, Thomas Tuchel is the new coach at Bayern Munich, right in front of the Klassiker. And the Klassiker went as it always goes in Munich, with Dortmund having no prayer whatsoever. You can play nice for 10, 10 minutes, then you make a mistake and Bayern are just ruthless there. Mir san mir. It is everything that you want to have about Bayern has happened in these past two, two weeks. The uh, chaos in the dressing room, the quick hiring and firing because uh, being on a really good course to win three titles uh, is not enough. You have to do it in style. And then, of course, when there's one challenger who is leading in the table and um, Dortmund come and Bayern just, you know, without even being great winning easily over Dortmund. So uh, that's what happened in the German Bundesliga. In Austria, we also had a coaching fire, uh, <laughs> also ready to buy, and Miroslav Klose got sacked by Altach. Also a little bit, bit surprising with Klaus Schmidt stepping in, who is kind of the uh, savior, the, uh, the, the du jour in um, Austria, and then he usually gets fired very quickly at the beginning of the next season. But Alter, it actually worked this time around as well. Um, the one thing that I have to, have to say before we go directly into the Austrian Brazil, what's actually quite exciting is that all the big five teams, and those are all the five teams that I have uh, back here, actually made it for the first time into the championship group. Uh, it's the second time in a row that both Vienna teams made it, but last this season Lusk missed us. And now with all these teams having actually really nice stadiums, plus Klagenfurt also playing in a nice day stadium, it actually feels like a proper league for the first time in a long time. And I'm gonna start in this proper league, if you like. Um, the relegation round kick, kick it off with Lucena putting Hartberg in a, a whole lot more trouble. We already said Alter getting a huge win over Tirol, which kind of relieves them a teeny bit of relegation trouble. And Wolfsburg also getting a good start uh, with a 1-0 over Reed. It is definitely all between Hartberg, Altach, Reed going forward. However, you know, now last fan, for me it was all about yesterday in the early afternoon where Salzburg had a very easy 3-0 win over Austria Klagenfurt. And if you're honest, Lask should have gotten a win in Vienna as well. This was one of those games where in the first half you can't controlled Austria Vienna, you scored two goals, which are rightly called off for offside. Um, as much as I hate to say it, but they were right the right call. You hit the post, you create chance. chances. Austria Vienna was not there. They had only uh, chance chances with uh, long range shots, which became a thing. In the second half, actually, the game kind of petered out. I mean, Lask again, a little bit much more, but it kind of was going nowhere until after, after, after a corner. The commentator says, well, Austria Vienna only has scored two goals after a corner kick. And I my first thought is, yeah, if they say only two, this will make it now three. And exactly happened. Corner come, comes in, it's head, headed up at Sears, it falls to Braunel from the edge of, of the box, one times it into the net. The, it's a brilliant goal. It's an absolutely brilliant goal um, where you cannot do anything, but it did not reflect the course of the game at that point. And to add insult to injury, 
they all stay uh, within three, three and a half, half, half minutes. They double the lead through former last player Reinhold Ramftl, who actually got a pretty badly stepped on inadvertently uh, before. For, for that, I actually thought that he might have to go out. I would have liked to him to go. Reini Ramftl was a really uh, popular player for Lusk. Now he scores another wor worldy after a bad pass out from uh, uh, Stoikovic. And it falls for falls him and then they cannot stop him. And another uh, worldy. It was just one of one, one of those. Uh, but I actually thought, I mean, we are really better than them. Why are we 2-0 down? Fortunately, uh, Coach Kuba reacts, brings on Mustafa for Ljubicic, who has scored the first offside goal. And then uh, uh, Nakamura dances through the defense, makes it a 2-1 and I thought gay game on. And actually, then they created many chances. Uh, Mustafa especially had two pretty, pretty big ones. One where it's a one-on-one -on -one with, 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 with the goalie. A little bit too indecisive. Um, that could have made it 2-2 or, 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 or in the 80th. A little bit Austria could then calm the storm because after the 2-2-1, there was really 10 minutes where Lask was, was pressing quite big. And then Jules across over to Fleck and the 90 to get a 2-2. I still maintain it was too little. Uh, this is a game that Lask should have won. It was not a... Yes, you fight back from a 2-0 down. But I even felt that a 2 2 down, the win is very much in there. Uh, in the evening game, the big uh, clash uh, was a little bit delayed because of a medical emergency uh, of the, within the spectators. It started out well when Omega uh, in the sixth minute already scored it, made it 1-0. But he probably should have been sent off just five minutes later because he really... He went the the go, uh, goalie Hadel had the ball and he went to him yes he wants to go for the ball but he really hits him with the uh with on, on the head he and he and he he mimicked afterwards two to two two hours I, I probably should should have walked he only got a yellow card and that's probably one where the way this game turned um Rapid actually came back with a brilliant goal from Burgstaller however then Sturm just being the better team and they are definitely the second best team and probably the most exciting team to watch in in, in, in Bundesliga just before the half Sakaria makes it 2-1 uh, uh, there was an offside uh, uh, call but it then um, uh, stood and then Kittish really just dances after an Omega pass uh, nicely to the defense and makes it 3-1 and so uh, Sturm keep up with Salzburg uh, up in, in a table and it's pretty much between those two there's no way that Lask is gonna go back I don't even think that Lask can catch Sturm unless some miracle happens Austria just moves ahead of Rapid uh, but I think the battle for third place is very much on on the bottom as we see uh, it is now between Austria Luster Tirol uh, those are the ones that go for seven and eight which potentially will mean that they could also go into the uh, a playoff eight, eight, eight spot at the moment is very likely to make it to the playoff given the cup more on that later and Altach now move out and Hartberg and Reed it's really 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 tight maybe Reed will go down uh, but we gotta see about that uh, the model says for now Hartberg but let's see how it will go uh, upcoming round Lusk has a double against Sturm Graz. First, we have the semi-final in the cup with uh, Rapid Vienna against Ried. Yeah, that will be probably relatively easy for Rapid Vienna because Ried never have even gotten a point in Vienna against Rapid. And then the big one on Thursday evening already sold, sold up against Sturm Graz and Lusk. And then, and we will be going, they also meet on Easter Sunday, but this time in Linz, so it is a double. Uh, that's a pretty big matchup, I gotta say. Also a pretty big one in the qualification round, or relegation round, if you would like. Uh, between Ried and Hartberg and Vorarlberg Derby. So there's quite some th some stuff there. Uh, will be tough times for Lusk, I have, I have to say, because playing twice against Sturm, that will not be easy. Let's go over to Germany, uh, where we had actually quite some remarkable results uh, besides the Klassiker. Eintracht Frankfurt 
Still cannot get it quite going. Only one one against Bochum, Kolumani equalizing just just pitch up before but they cannot get a result at the moment. Freiburg also a little bit going sideways. Vincenzo Grifo with a free kick, yeah, one that was slight, slightly deflected, uh, gives Freiburg the lead F after half, but Ngankam uh, deserved equalizer for Hertha, who get the first point away from home in a long, long, long time. So that, that was remarkable. Then maybe uh, the eye-catching result, Mainz, who am wearing 3-0 at Leipzig. Leipzig not looking good and Mainz, Mainz really getting it. Uh, it's something going in May challenge for a European spot. We, we have to see it. Ingwertsen in the ninth minute, Ajork and Korge get, get it in goals. Schalke fought well, valiantly, but in the end it was too, too little. And uh, Le Leverkusen, Frimpong and uh, Wirtz in the 50th and 60th first send it one way. And then Asmund makes it a 3-0. And Leverkusen is the informed team now in the, ball, in, in the Bundesliga. And the Schalke Belonso is a quite an impressive turnaround. Union Berlin against uh, Stuttgart. Stuttgart actually played quite nicely in the first half. However, as soon as Geraldo Becker may exit 1-0, this was only going one way and uh, Behrens and Haraguchi then make it a rather decisive score and it's probably not quite a reflective of how that game went uh, at this time. Bruno Labbadi is still the coach that I'm recording, but there's many discussions that he might actually get the sack. However, there's a cup run, I guess they're waiting for uh, that. Uh, but there is real trouble in Stuttgart brewing. I would be sad to see Stuttgart go down again. Wolfsburg created 2-2 against Augsburg. Der Klassiker. It actually started out that uh, Dortmund in the first 10 minutes so gave Bayern quite some trouble, pressed them high, they couldn't get out. And then uh, a long ball from Upe Meccano into nowhere and Cole wants to clear it and miss hits it or barely hits it or doesn't hit it. I still think it's an Upper mechanical and goes and it rolls into his goal. And that shocked Dortmund so much that just a few few minutes later, uh, Müller after the Licht um, header after the corner taps it in from close range. The, uh, the defense unsorted and then another five many minutes later, Müller makes it 3-0. And the game is done. Uh, Dortmund maybe could have, oh, there was a little bit of a comeback chance there, but again, they missed a chance and Coman in the 50th makes it 4 for nil. Yes, Emre Can penalty and Daniel Marlin goal in the 90th make the score and look nicer. But this was Bayern as Bayern do and Tuchel gets his first win as a Bayern coach. And you really think that, yeah, they're going to kick on now. I think this, uh, I mean, the coaches after, uh, coach, um, Terzic effort was that this is not what we want. I mean, he likes what the first 10, 10 minutes were. But Gregor Kober, who has been really good for Dortmund, he's allowed to make a mistake, but then you have to play it a little bit smarter. You cannot then within 10, 10 minutes concede two more in Munich. Uh, and it's same old story, same old story in Munich. Uh, when Dortmund are coming, they just cannot get anything there. Uh, Köln Gladbach was actually a really entertaining first half with Köln having the majority of chances. However, there was a clear penalty call for Gladbach in there as well. And then the game kind of petered out in the second half and, Do and Hoffenheim get a 2-1 win against Bremen. Also a big one uh, there. Uh, I have a feeling that Bremen, although still looking kind of safe, they might turn, turn, turn the other way. And this is the last time how they got relegated where they looked safe and then it kind of went sideways. Uh, you see in the table, Bremen 31 points and on the bottom, they're picking up slowly points. So it's not so, um, you know, it's not so sexy secure, although I still would say that there's an outside chance. I'm a little bit more worried about Köln, but I think they also will uh, stay in. Köln, by the way, hit with a transfer ban, which actually might impact them for uh, next season. Up top, it's now Bayern ahead of Dortmund. Union Berlin and Leipzig are the ones to schedule for the Champions League, although Freiburg is still ahead. Frankfurt holding on. Uh, Frankfurt is kind of still within striking distance, but I was looking at Leverkusen and Mainz to overtake them to Wales because they are definitely in form teams right now. Uh, and then when I look at the expected final final standings, you kind of see uh, Frankfurt outside now. But again, there's the cup, which actually might add another Europa League spot. And then within the seventh, you could go in there. But uh, it is tight. 
Speaking of, yes, we have the quarterfinals coming up. Uh, Frankfurt against Union Berlin. That's a pretty tough one. Then uh, Bayern Freiburg is already happening on Tuesday. Uh, Nürnberg against Stuttgart is kind of the outside duel. And Leipzig again against Dortmund. Um, when the draw was made, this was kind of the standard fixture at the moment. It looks like that despite Dortmund being hammered by Bayern, that Dortmund actually should win this relatively easily. So uh, let's see where this is going. I'll also give it the next two rounds in the German Bundesliga. Leverkusen Frankfurt is, is, is a pretty big game in there, if I have to say. And then there are also a few for relegation. Bochum, Stuttgart, uh, uh, Hoffenheim, Schalke. Although Hoffenheim probably made the turn around already. And if Köln doesn't want to get in there, they better get a uh, result in Augsburg as well. And then you also see the uh, matches for the next round with Frankfurt. Gladbach kind of sticking out a little bit without being a top game that was it from me from those two leagues uh please let me know what you thought about the have have having these, these two leagues give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this i will talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day Bye.